My first guest is a CNN senior legal analyst, Sirius XM talk show host, and best-selling author who truly defines success on her own terms. After graduating from law school, Laura Coates began her career in private practice before serving as a trial attorney in the Civil Rights Division of the United States Department of Justice as a federal prosecutor. But Laura, then a new mom, took a leap of faith, leaving a successful career behind to pursue a new dream in the TV world. With hard work, Laura made her dream a reality. And her latest book, Just Pursued, a black prosecutor's fight for fairness, tells a very personal story that takes us back to where it all started. Laura Coates joins us now from Washington, D.C. Let's welcome her to the TFM. Thank you so much for being here. Hi, I'm so excited to talk to you, Tamron. I'm such, such an enormous fan of yours. You have no idea. So I'm gonna, I'm not gonna fangirl right now, but just know that below this screen, I'm dying inside. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, speaking of screen, I don't know the exact day, but I know the reaction, Laura, when I turned on CNN, and I saw you, and I said, this is one of the ones. She is the one. I, and I have just watched you rise and, and become such a strong force uh, for justice and for what is fair and right in our society. And when you look at your, your life trajectory, especially that leap of faith to leave you know, a safe and secure, and I'm sure financially prosperous life to this <laughs> unknown world of television. What was that like? You know, it's funny because um, people often think, and you hear people say, well, what happened? And how did you get where you are? And they have all these stories about how, oh, it just sort of happened. No, Tamron, I literally took a leap of faith. And I said to myself, I'm going to bet on myself. I, I'm going to just try for a year. I remember turning to my husband, who is a very thin man who happens to love ramen, thankfully. And I said, I'm going to try. I'm going to try for this year. I had a newborn. I had two babies at that point. And I really said to myself, I want to take the muzzle away. I want to be able to use what I've learned in the Justice Department. And I want to be able to use my education in the form of activism by helping people to better understand the calls for justice and what it really looked like. And so, you know, I literally remember leaving and people laughing at me and saying, oh, she'll be back. And, oh, good for you. You're going to try to do television, Laura? That's cute. And I posted up in a Panera Bread, Tamron. I sat there with my cup of water, nursing the free tea. I hope it was free. I paid for it, I think. And I sat there nursing my <laughs> tea and figuring out, how am I going to do this? How am I going to figure out to take what I've been through and experienced and help people to understand? And I sat there, and I figured it out. And through a series of serendipitous occasions, I really got my launch in radio and eventually TV. And you know, I, I kind of smirk at times, as you can imagine, and think, I'm so glad I didn't listen to the people who were not just the voices in my head, but people on the outside saying, good luck, and not meaning a word of it. Right. You know, you, you mentioned these serendipitous occasions. And what I often tell people is, if the door is open a sliver, you have to be ready to kick it down. And so often, when you're trying to achieve a dream, people expect doors to just open wide. I mean, here you were, successful in your career, obviously brilliant and able and capable of taking on a television job. But the doors weren't just wide open. You kick those doors open. I never try to lament and wallow when a door is closed, because then you forget that there might be doors or windows opening someplace else, and you're too busy boohoo crying in this direction, figuring out, why wasn't that me? And I just think that, you know, as they say, yeah. hard work requires, and you know this, I mean, you have not gotten to the place where you are and revered as an icon for me personally and so many others by simply resting on your laurels and hoping that one day someone knocks on your door and says, is there a fabulous woman here who has a lot to say and opinionated and can really be eloquent in her journalism? Oh, is her name Tamron? But it, it doesn't happen that way, right? It has to happen from within. And so I, I found I try to stay with that mantra of look for those windows. And if you can't find those open doors and windows, build your own house. Um, Laura, you have this incredible book out, and it is, it is a, it is so beautiful to read, but at times so difficult. Um, hearing your journey and hearing what you've experienced and seen over these years um, in the book, you you talk about a case you worked on when you were pregnant, and in your personal life crossed over if you will, into your work. You said, my unborn baby kept kicking me through the jury selection, through the opening statement, through the direct examinations, through the expert testimony, through the photographs of the assault, 
Through the medical testimony, two mothers were on trial for savagely assaulting a pregnant woman in an unsuccessful attempt to take the life of the unborn child. Just reading that and trying to visualize the strength that it had to take. There you are preparing to celebrate life, but also facing the realities of the world that that new life in your body will face. And that world is not just, it can be ugly, it can be cruel. And you were in the courtroom looking at that. You know, I was really intentional about writing this from the perspective of a narrative memoir and not just sort of a law school textbook where people can talk and pontificate about what they think justice looks like in the system. And that story reminds me of just that transformational experience of what it meant to become a mother. And I think so many times in our career, sometimes we're told to shy away from the things that are perceived as weaknesses. We're told, okay, even hide your pregnancy until the absolute last moment, because God forbid someone realize how we procreate in the human race. And to take and who you are to sort of leave it behind. And I tell you, when I was able to really get that moment of bringing who I was, having my, at the time, my baby kicking me, telling me and forcing me, you've got to bring me with you because I'm on this journey. What you're carrying physically is also what you're figuratively carrying. And I, I chose to bring that across the threshold. And sometimes it, you know, made me cry. And sometimes it made me extremely vulnerable and it felt raw. But I think that it makes you better to not leave yourself at the door or not think about what impact the choices you make will have on not just the next generation in general, but your own child. There's my, oh, there's my baby boy. Yay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Look at that cute face. I can't, you know, I, that's interesting. You say that I've been obsessed with this uh, documentary. It's not new, but it's on Toni Morrison. And it, they tell the story of how she would keep the door open while she was writing. So her kids never felt blocked out. So they always felt that there was no space that mom was creating in that they could not come into. And it actually changed me. And now I, I used to close the door. We're scripting and doing things. Now my poor team has to deal with Moses popping in on Zooms because I didn't <laughs> want him to feel closed out because he does need to see how the dream, this dream job that I have is made and how it comes to be. I am curious, um, when, when you explain this to your children, you know, how to pursue a dream, how do you answer that for them when they say, mom, how do I make my dream come true? Well, you know, I was very fortunate as a child that my parents did something similar to what you talk about. They let me see who they were. I mean, flaws and all. They let me see what financial issues look like, what it looked like to have a marriage, what it looked like to be entrepreneurs or to be employed by someone else, spending your days making their dreams come true, and what it looks like, the moonlighting and on the side. And so what I do is, while I'm having the conversations, you know, with the world, really, on these important matters, I have my children watching me. I mean, I, I have them watch it. I have them ask the questions. I have the conversation with the country and the talk with my children to let them know how these things can parallel. But most importantly, I say things to my kids like, mommy feels afraid today. I'm nervous. You know, I'm anxious about something. Can I ask you your advice? They're seven and nine years old. So sometimes the advice is like, just have some Cheetos. And I'm like, that, that wasn't where I was going with that. But I do like Cheetos. Thank you so much. <laughs> I love that. You know what? Speaking of things people like, I'm a huge Jeopardy fan, and I was, of course, a huge fan of Alex Trebek. And Ooh. I vividly remember, and I've always wanted the backstory on this, before Alex had passed away, um, he mentioned your name on a list of two people. It was you and someone else as people who could host Jeopardy. And I said, like, wait a minute, I need to find out from, I wanted to call you, I wanted to tweet you and say, <laughs> what, what, was Alex Trebek watching CNN like me? What is the backstory there? I actually was as shocked as anyone else was when he first said, I never met him. I, I'm a lifelong fan of Jeopardy. I mean, I, I sometimes will watch it twice in a night and then play it back for my kids so I have all the actual answers so I look even smarter to my children. And I was thrilled when he said my name and I thought, my God, this person that I have watched my whole life, really, um, could, even knows my name, let alone thinks that I would be worthy enough to fill his shoes, which 
frankly can't be filled. And um, I was honored by it. And and I I, I I had a chance to thank him and also to reach out to him while his struggle um, with pancreatic cancer, because my own grandmother passed away. And it, it just angers me still that we continue to lose so many great people to it. Um, and I, I asked for the opportunity when it came time, um, when they were looking for people to possibly fill in. I certainly raised my hand and knocked on doors and found them closed. And um, I asked for the opportunity. I was told no, which is one of those moments, Tamron, when you have to remember to wear your own jersey. You have to remember to continue to be yeah. your own champion in other respects. And, and um, sometimes the vision that you have for yourself or those that surprise you from other people don't align with what happens. And that happened there. But I tell you, yeah. With the work I do now, do you know how much easier my life would be if I had the answers in advance? Are you kidding me? Listen. <laughs> that would be great. I will tell you, first of all, I, I loved seeing Alex Trebek mention your name. I was disappointed, full uh, disclosure, not to see you host. But here's the deal. And I will say this over and over, not just to you, anybody else. Everything that I've wanted that I didn't get, it was revealed to me in time. Why? Things mm. I thought I wanted turned out not to be for me. So I am I happy you are that. here. This book is brilliant. And what you do is so important. And we're grateful uh, to have you on. And I love the mom advice. You gave me all these ideas. Okay, have a dream of Cheetos tonight. There you go. <laughs> Give it to it. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Laura, her book is Just Pursuit is available everywhere tomorrow. Go get it. Please, please go get it.